Enjoying secrets of a sugar daddy? How about a little something extra? Here's today's dose of extra sugar with Marcus. Hey, this is Marcus, and welcome to this segment of Extra Sugar. So today I'm going to discuss an article written by Arise Sylvester. She says, Life after being a sugar baby, I couldn't turn the character all the way off. Much has been said and written about sugar dating. We've explored its perks and the often publicized lifestyle upgrade that accompanies being a sugar baby. We've talked about how to remain safe while actively practicing in the community. And we've discussed how to seek out the optimal sugar daddy. But when it comes to how the life after sugar dating plays out, there's still a lot we are yet to unpack. By nature, most sugar relationships are short, intense, and quick to fizzle out. After a while, the majority of sugar babies look to leave the community and settle into various facets of normal society. But is that easy as it sounds? Well, the short answer is no. Although good sugar relationships share a lot of their foundation, which is respect, communication, boundaries, with regular relationships, there's enough disparities that make the mindset needed to maintain the two widely dissimilar. For one, sugar relationships are heavily transactional and build up standards that regular partners might struggle to maintain. Kelsey Dunn, a 26-year-old retired sugar baby, told us that returning to regular dating was one of the hardest things she has ever had to do. She says, My first vanilla relationship after a four-year sugar dating spree was a nightmare. Before this, I was getting flown out for first dates and receiving weekly allowances. Then I started dating someone who earned as much as me and obviously couldn't give that. My brain struggled to make the switch. Dr. Miro Gudelski, licensed psychologist and sex therapist, explains that some sugar babies struggle with recognizing sugar dating as a business and separating it from their personal lives. When the two get mixed up, expectations may become unreasonable, selfish, and problematic. She says, I have seen this happen where sugar babies get accustomed to receiving gifts simply for showing up. It's easy for folks to lose themselves in this mindset, and when this happens, the ability to form deeper connections in a relationship is stunted. Dunn says that although she really liked the person she was dating at the time, it was inevitable that they would break up. I was a toxic ball of entitlement that constantly demanded money and other things. I never offered to pay for any of our dates, and every time we had sex, I expected something in return. I also withheld love when I didn't get my way. It was hard to see him pass someone who liked me and could buy me things. Because of the nature of their relationship, many sugar babies deliberately prevent themselves from emotionally investing in their sugar daddies. This is a defense mechanism that ensures the end of a sugar relationship is as painless as possible. But turning the switch back can be complicated and sugar babies may end up being unable to thrive in a non-transactional relationship where emotional investment is a necessity. The key to sugar dating is protecting your emotions so you can really finesse and get to the bag says Dash Priestley, dating coach and former sugar baby. Priestley, who grew up an unaffectionate person, says that sugar dating exacerbated this and emotionally desensitized her. She says, I like to think of being a sugar baby as playing a character and you have to turn off this character when you're pursuing something more long term. Sometimes you can't really turn it all the way off. Another speed bump in the life after sugar dating is met when sugar babies become accustomed to choosing romantic partners for the wrong reasons. In regular relationships, security is related to several components like shared goals, common values, emotional, and intellectual compatibility. Sugaring alters the organic decision process that one might go through because it does not take these components into perspective. This means that sugar babies are prone to ignoring red flags in favor of financial compatibility, which is what they are familiar with. It is a case of choosing what hill you're willing to die on, Priestley told us. I date a lot of men who are entitled and self-absorbed. They don't make good long-term partners, but their money makes the hassle worth it. Like her, Autumn Cody, who likes to refer as sugar dating as intentional dating, has a history of ignoring major flaws in her partners because their finances made dating them worth it. She says, I was in a relationship with a guy who came from a wealthy family. He was a really toxic person. We fought all the time and we didn't believe in the same things, but I stuck with it because I was getting all those benefits from his family's money. 
This approach to relationship is not only exhausting and destructive, but it may also lead to sugar babies accepting abuse within the relationship. However, life after sugar dating is not always bad. It isn't always selfish actions and superficial thinking. Dr. Gudelski, who regularly works with sex workers, reports that many of her clients become more whole versions of themselves as a result of their sugar dating. Sugar babies can gain clarity, realize their worth, and have a better understanding of what they want out of life. Cody confirms this as she says that sugar dating boosted her self-esteem immensely. She says, I started sugar dating for fun as a sophomore in college. Before that, I was a deeply insecure person, but once I started getting attention and loads of gifts from men, I realized I was a bad bitch and I could really do anything. Basing your self-worth off others isn't the healthiest option, Dunn says, but I think it's just the right amount of validation needed to kickstart your journey into self-love. Sugar dating can boost confidence. It can also teach sugar babies how to set firm and healthy boundaries. Before a sugar relationship even begins, both parties establish expectations, limits, and personal boundaries, and this sets a precedent for how sugar babies approach future romantic relationships. Priestley says, Because the majority of my dating has been sugar dating, I've never been afraid to take up space and ask for what I want and I know I deserve. Dr. Gudelski says that being able to talk about desires, expectations, needs are skill sets many young people don't always learn. This in turn leaves us with aging adults who cannot ask for what they truly desire and sometimes don't even know what they want. Learning to ask for what you want in the context of an intimate setting is very valuable and it's a good thing sugar dating reinforces this. Just like any other job, Dunn says it's important that everyone goes into sugar dating with a comprehensive knowledge of what they're going to be dealing with. People talk a lot about how glamorous sugaring is and not enough about all the ways it can mess you up. That's why I encourage people to ask the right questions and listen to the right people. I hope you enjoyed today's Extra Sugar, and don't forget to catch a full episode of Secrets of a Sugar Daddy every Tuesday. And as always, we welcome your comments, suggestions, and your stories at our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com. All right, until next time, bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed your Extra Sugar with Marcus. As always, visit our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com, to comment or tell us your story. 